three, two, one, and we are live. And we have four, four likes without doing anything and anything, anything at all. I like this live business. I kind of like this English speaking channel. I kind of like going back to what I love the most, and that is talking to people and not talking at people. Welcome, everyone. Um, whoa, there's probably more of us than we. Ash, fuck, hello. Um, let me make sure that people who um, came to the first link are not still there, Remind, reminding them that I'm here. All right, let's start from the beginning. Fragrance View, hi, Gabriela, hi, Raluca, hi, Alex, hi. It would be very nice if you guys can tell us where you're joining from, because this is my house. You're still waiting for the must video. I'm only depending on Sebastian for that. This is my house. Whoever comes into my house is being greeted, but I would very much appreciate it if you could tell us where you're um, logging in from. Something's on after a very, very, very long um, break, uh, unintentional break. And I'm Yorkshire, Romania, Cluj, Dhaka. Welcome, Copenhagen. We're from everyone from everywhere i love this but um lives in general um before we start if you've never been to this channel um you're not the only one there are only about 300 of us over here because this channel is uh, dedicated entirely to the stuff nobody talks about or cares about for that matter to the obscure to the long forgotten to the lesser known or brand new items in perfumery that are hard to get to hard to get to know, um, and basically stuff nobody um, has yet um, delivered any material on because I think it's important to not forget the good stuff. Forever Fragrant Kid, welcome. <laughs> and thank you for all the support. I know you're everywhere. Um, like I was saying, this is uh, this is not your usual channel. And because before I start um, with what I prepared for you today, um, since this is the first, you know, this is like this disclaimer, I suck at recording, which is why I don't post as much as others. Uh, number two, uh, I suck at editing, and I hate the time it takes to prepare material. Some of you are very, very good at that. I am not. I, I, I am sucky big time. And uh, third, I love, like I said, talking to people and not at people. English does not come natural to me. It feels stupid speaking to a mirror because that's what the camera is to me. And four, um, I... For those of you who don't know this, maintain a very active, uh, very informed, very demanding Romanian community and huge at that, um, which kind of takes up all of my awake time when I'm not actually working for a living. Liliana, hello. Anna, Spain is with us. Rome. Hello, everyone. I love it. All right. Um, there are 12 of us. That's a huge number considering this is the first live I'm doing. But as I was saying, I'm very used to live videos because I um, practice them with my remaining community. We have live videos twice a week. Um, one is on Tuesday with individual reviews and another one is on Fridays with social issues, with stuff that, again, nobody talks about. Religion, gender, <laughs> uh, uh, social policies, international news, politics, and so on and so forth. Um, and that's a big live, uh, usually for the hour I'm on there, about a thousand of us coming and going. So I much more preferred this format. If you're into it, we're going to keep at it for as long as I can find material. I will not be talking about stuff that's already been reviewed because I believe the English speaker, uh, crowd is usually extremely good at covering all the news, covering um, a lot of stuff, so I don't want to add to the noise. Therefore, this channel, just like I said before, is dedicated to the stuff nobody talks about, to the obscure, to the long forgotten, to the unknown gems in perfumery. Hopefully, you will get to learn at least a tiny bit from me, if not about fragrance, then, you know, other stuff. Am I the only one who has problems with the signal and the quality of the image? I don't know. I do not know. I hope you are. 
I hope is everybody seeing me okay? Is everybody hearing me okay? Yours is crackly too. I don't know what to do. Dang. I'm on the wrong work. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? See, that's why I don't do stuff well because I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. Looking for net network. Will that drop the connection? Peer connection. Again, protected one. I don't know what to do. This can do in books, but I guess that's what happened. Are you still there? Are you still there? Is everybody still there? Is anybody still there? Please say something. Please do something. I apologize. Good look. Okay. We're back in business. All right. The old factor is here. Good, 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 good. Better pick, better everything. I changed the connections. So I guess we're ready to go. For those of you who just got here, welcome. I'm very happy to start these um, live videos. Uh, some of you follow me on Instagram. I know you're very active on other collaborations I've been uh, doing with other YouTubers or with real YouTubers. Um, I sometimes survive and thrive through them. But because I have a lot of material to talk about, um, that's kind of like backlogged that I've been putting on the list to address but never got to, um, I decided I'm going to do these things live. And I hope come next week, I will have built a little bit of practice and um, things will be slightly easier for me to do and for you to watch. For today, I picked a house that doesn't get much love because it um, uh, was launched in 2010 and disappeared in 2011. Go figure. Um, most of you know Stefan Humbert Luca from his eponymous house. He has, hey, brother Lucas. Hi, Poland is with us. Um, yes, Stefan Humbert Lucas 777, um, that's his eponymous house, that means the house with his name, <laughs> um, and they're good, some of them, some of them are extraordinary, some of them are on my wish list, I mean, one of them is on my wish list, I have a bunch, not a bunch, but a couple or three of them back there, um, good quality stuff. Uh, punchy stuff, stuff that, you know, literally hits you in the face and expensive. Uh, but what most of us, myself included, didn't know was that he, before launch, he launched um, uh, his house, had launched another house before. He's composed a lot of stuff for a lot of houses, but he only participated as a founder in two, two brands, one of them is the one that we all know about. So Oud, yes, he's 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 created a lot of stuff and he still creates for So Oud um, as a consultant, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but before that, he started a house that is more artistic than anything else. I wouldn't put it into an indie because it's not a um, an exercise and you know blending and chemistry and uh, you know I made it at home and I'm gonna sell it for a lot of money uh, because it's good, but more like uh, a love project uh, that he created with Karin Chevalier. And that is called Ne Ane, Nez Anez. It's written like this, Ne Ane. In translation from French, it means, literally means, Nose to nose, and it implies a sort, a sort of um, intimacy, a sort of togetherness, a sort of sharing something. You get that close with somebody, not to kiss them, but to share a secret, for example, or to you know plan something very important, or to uh, separate the two of you from the rest of the world. Is what friends. Um, uh, may share, not necessarily lovers. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of um, intimacy that uh, uh, provides the notion of secrecy and 
the active sharing of something that's um, you know not for everybody. So Nea Ne, I was attracted by the name, and to be honest, when I found out about them a long time ago, I liked the bottles. Uh, probably saw them on Fragrantica or something. I don't know how I ran into them. Although I think they would have been uh, even smarter had they had a detail that I'm going to tell you about um, right away. Um, anyway, Nea Nea, as I said, was started by Stéphane Humbert Luca with Karine Chevalier. She's also very active and has been very active lately. Um, in 2010, and by 2011, the house was gone. There are only 12, 11 or 12 fragrances in the line, and I'm going to talk about three of them today, even though I have a feeling there's a fourth, but I'm not very sure if the fourth I misplaced, put it somewhere for testing, or hasn't been yet sent to me uh, because it was purchased in Italy. Actually, all three of these were purchased in Italy. I paid an embarrassing low amount of money for each of them, considering what they go for on eBay. But there you go. The Romanian community comes through, and whenever they know I'm looking for something, they're looking for that something for me. And when they find it, I PayPal them, you know, the whole thing. So that's how I'm able to source some of the stuff that otherwise would be ruinous to buy in the United States or elsewhere, for that matter. So, like I said, I have three bottles of Nea Ne. Uh, different fragrances. I believe there's a fourth. If I find it ever, I will make an addendum to this um, and I will talk about that as well. Um, and the three bottles, three fragrances that I'm going to talk about today are Forêt de Bécharé, Lettre Rêve, and Hiroshima Mon Amour. You guys are not saying anything. Either you're listening to me or you're gone. So can somebody give me a sign that you're alive and breathing, please? Thank you very much. This? No? Thank you? Come on, I was nervous in the beginning, but I'm not nervous now. I can... <laughs> Thank you. Happily listening. All right, let's start with the beginning. The boxes... <laughs> Got it. The boxes look like this. They're very... Yes, I am charming you. Look me in the eye. The bottles, the boxes are Bogdana Dodi. Welcome. The boxes are, as you see them, they're very consistent. They're heavy and made super well. Maybe it didn't make sense to produce these. I don't know what the story is. I don't know what the why the house disappeared in 2011. Um, but the entire collection, to me, having read about it, having smelled it, have it having, you know, ponder upon what they created, um, uh, gives me the impression of a collection of somebody's collection of movies, for example. Uh, Hiroshima Mon Amour was inspired by a movie made in 59 or 60. Did I see someone Hindi style script in the first box? Yes, right here. This one. Forêt de Bécharé, which is completely unrelated. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, it, but it is Hindi style script. Although it says Forêt de Bécharé, but it's, in, in, it's, it, it's styled like in Hindi style. Um, I was saying, looking at this collection, hi, Ilko. Um, looking at this collection um, and and thinking about it, basically, because that's what I do most of the times. I just sit and drink coffee and think. Um, it made me um, it it made me think of a cinephil's movie collection, for example. You know, we all have that one friend who's into cinema noir, who's watching all the obscure Russian directors, who knows all the Scandinavian directors, who pronounces Adonovsky uh, completely correctly, and so on and so forth, and has a movie collection that we don't even know how to pronounce. We, You know what I'm saying, right? Or that music fiend uh, amongst our friends who has a collection that you know is good, but is kind of intimidating because it's so highly conceptual that it doesn't really relate to anything that we know about that domain. It's not music you kind of like exercise or vacuum on. It's special music that has to be play, played in a certain way and so on and so forth. So 
so you know what I'm talking about. We all have one of those friends. Looking at this collection, it was so removed out of the perfumistic context that not only myself, um, my you know own self exists in but you know the 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 niche today activates in that i decided to to pick this for the first live because it's hard to come up with the right words anyway um so recording <laughs> a description of the house would be futile and i feel wouldn't do it justice i hope it makes sense what i'm saying to you it's vague it's highly artistic it's um, I would call it ultra niche, and I'm talking about it because you can still find it on the internetics if you're lucky and good to your karma. So let's start with Forêt de Bécheret because this introduction was incredibly long. I apologize for that. Ooh, he's my like gourmet sour now cold coffee. Forêt de Bécharet. Um, if you find some, if you found some bottles, tell us what the price is if you can. Hi, Wiki. Where are you coming from? If you can, let us know where you're logging in from. I am all for the global village, and I like to see um, how spread out we are. Uh, Forêt de Bécharet, just like the other two boxes, because that's what we're talking about. Three different fragrances today. Hi, Andrea Bucharest, welcome. Um, they all open like this. Oh, that's not bad. 55 lira uh, pounds. Pardon, pounds. That's about what? Seven. Ooh. <laughs> Can you get me the rest? <laughs> I may be PayPaling you a little bit later, um, but let's let's talk about the fragrances first because I want to I want to give you um, my thoughts and impressions on each of them and then on the collection at large. My nose is already stuffy, which means I'm overworking it. As in, I'm too excited about this. Uh, it's a fantastic price in America. They go for like one sixty five, one ninety five, um, something like that. I paid fifty euros for each, so. If any of you can beat that, come to me and I'll pay for the pay value right away. Um, all of them, I said, are in very, very strong, very um, well produced. If any of you worked in manufacturing or did production for anything related to packaging, you know how much it costs to create something like this. It's matte, hard um, material with um, a screening here, um, all size sides are printed, which again costs a lot of money. Um, most of the ingredients are on the box, but something really weird happens because half of them are in French. Half um, uh, on the upper side they're in French, on the lower side they're in English, but they don't always correspond. So there are differences between what's declared here in French and what's here in English. Um, let me know which one you found, please. So there's that. Um, and all of them open the same way, which I absolutely like. If you set them upright um, in a position that lets you, you know, see everything from the front, they all open like a drawer. And this drawer does not fit in any other <laughs> position except for this one. When you're looking at it with the bottle pointing up, of course, like a drawer. So I like that. I'm a nerd for details, as most of you know. So I kind of like that, like this very much. And inside you have the bottle that is um, very, cons very, uh, Thick, substantial, that's the word I was looking for. Um, but very simple. Now, it sits on a bed of um, foam, something foamy. It's not very fancy inside, although um, it's, like I said, it's good quality materials. And the bottle looks like this. Like I said, it's thick, it's 
heavy, it's stable, it's not one of those weird bottles that you have to kind of like lean over that takes too much space, and that is only a problem for all of us here who collect fragrance like maniacs, because you know what it's like to not have enough space for yet another bottle that goes like this. Um, <clears throat> hefty bottle, um, the top of it almost feels like um, a lighter Bakelite. It's, it's just plastic. It's kind of discordant um, with the bottle because this is so well produced and so well packaged. It's clean. Um, um, the writing is good quality, whatever this is embossing or um, my camera wants my eyes. I don't know. It just doesn't focus, I guess. Okay, there you go. So um, this this embossing or silk screening, whatever this is called, um, is very good quality. Um, it's shiny, it's crisp, it's clean, all that stuff. Forêt de Bécharet. Actually, I was very surprised uh, to see it written like this, and I was very surprised to see the Hindu scripts. Like I was saying, um, uh, um, um, to Afshak, was it? Because Forêt du Bécharet has nothing to do um, with with um, India. Forêt du Bécharet um, is actually a UNESCO patrimony area, protected area in Lebanon. It's a cedar forest. Um, if from Arabic, it's also translated into the, the forest of God. Um, and this, I guess, takes inspiration from that. Like I said, most fragrances are very highly conceptual. They refer to something that very few people know about, unless you're like into it or passionate about that particular stuff. Even the concept that sits behind every fragrance is a niche concept. And they're not all part of the same, uh, uh, string of pearls, if that makes sense. Each of them, I think, are special, but they're not cohesive necessarily, except for this very weird particularity of being highly conceptual and talking about something nobody talks about or knows about. Um, but they're not related. This concept is not related to the next, is not related to the next. So this one refers or takes inspiration from a natural um, uh, monument uh, that currently exists, and I hope it'll stay um, in existence in Lebanon. Well, sometimes I do research and sometimes I just know stuff because I'm, I, I have that kind of, I don't know, something. Um, so this one is taking inspiration from a natural uh, monument in Lebanon called the, the Forest of God. Um, Earlier, I was, I was telling you that these bottles would have been made perfect in my head if, <laughs> and I don't know where this is coming from, if any of you are preparing fragrances out there or working with fra fragrance houses and need ideas, come to me because ideas I got. It's just time and occasion I do not have. Um, I would have loved to see these with a punt. You know what a punt is? In English, in English, uh, um, what is it called in French? I need to remember what it's called in French. But a punt in English is that hole in the butt of champagne bottles. You know how the bottle goes like this? <laughs> you may need my PayPal. <laughs> the 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 no, that's not how it works. I send you money to buy me stuff. I don't sell things. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, it's the other way around. No. No. So a punt is that bubble in the butt of champagne bottles. You know how the, the, the bottle goes concave? This is a flat bottom, yes. Um, I would have loved it to be punted because in my head it would be it would be fantastic. The dipping bottle. It would be fantastic if you can put one bottle on top of each other so it's kind of like a column of bottles. Does that make sense? I don't know why. In my head, that is what these should have had. Like a smaller, maybe a smaller, more, you know, flatter thing. Or maybe leave the top the way it is and make a punt in the bottle. 
so that it fits exactly and they stack. I would love that. I would love that. If anybody uses it, please uh, just, just give me credit. I don't want money. I don't want your fragrances. Just give me credit. Just tell people it came from me. <laughs> but I'm thinking even for even for travel, can you imagine to have like a like a column, smaller maybe, of stacking bottles? Why not? That would be really cool. Anyway, and imagine each of them is like a different color, like Slumber House has. Can you imagine? It's like, whoo! Um, yeah, that would be nice. All right, go ahead and be shy. Let's talk about trademark it now. I I'm I don't work like that. I don't I don't function like that. I my brain is a <laughs> is is a bottomless pit of things. Ideas I'm not lacking. So if others want to take them and not give them credit, leave them. Let them. It's it's karma. It'll, you know, my grandmother or Romanians have a saying, what's yours is set aside. So whether you grab it now or later it's always going to be there for you like if i'm meant to do anything about this reviewing thing about this like idea perfumery idea stuff it'll happen even without me trying so ah! all right let's talk about the um let's talk about the ingredients a little bit um the bottom says Eau de parfum. this is in 100 milliliter <laughs> thank you um but one, one of the sides, it says, concentré d'art, extrait d'émotion. Pardon my French, it's a little rusty, but it means art concentrate. So I was on to something with this artistic interpretation. Um, art concentrate, ex extract of emotion. There you go. So Anna's ahead of me. Yes. Hiroshima Monamur will be the last one I talk about because I want to uh, gradate the styling of a fragrance. The Forêt du Béchai, as the name says, is meant to smell um, like a forest. And the way um, uh, Umber Luca and Karin Chevalier decided... Right. Right. Um, decided to develop fragrance or describe the development of a fragrance is this they found the three levels in experimenting a fragrance um that they uh, that okay let me let me pedal back a little bit they found that the three um levels that we're used to associate with the pyramid of smell you know the top notes the middle notes the bottom notes correspond to three phases in one's um perception of consciousness or experimenting art, which is kind of similar, if you ask me. Um, in other words, transposing one's self into a reality that is outside of you, music, something visual, a smell, um, and trying to find the coordinates. Um, uh, they kind of isolated three phases in this uh, personal experimentation, in this case, of smell. And they define them as such. Fulgurance, metamorphosis, and quintessence. Okay, so fulgurance comes from fulg, which from Latin means, I don't have a sorte de. I have three sorte de because today we're introducing a house and I'm going to be talking about three different fragrances. So I'm wearing three right now. So fulgurance comes from Latin, has a Latin root. Fulg means flake. So, um, I don't know who Shane is. No Shane? I don't know. I have no idea. Hi, Amy. Uh, oh, Nishane. Uh, I'm actually talking about a house that Stefan Humbert Luca started, founded, before he started um, Stefan Humbert Luca. I'm only talking about obscure things that nobody talks about. So, um so today I'm talking about a house called Neane, started by SHL a long time ago. They're fantastic creations. They're very artistic, highly conceptual. And the first one I'm talking about is Forêt du Bécharet. Um, 
So fulgurance, like I said, starts with fulg, which from Latin uh, translates or um, corresponds into flake. So fulgurance, imagine like a flurry of snow when it's barely starting to like flake down, right? Um, that is what they think the first initial impact Nan it discontinued a long time ago. They started in 2010 and they disappeared in 2011. They only existed for one year. So fulgurance is the top note correspondent, if you want. Metamorphosis is probably the middle um, of what they're trying to uh, convey through this artistic act that they also say is an extract of emotion and a art concentrate. Um, and the quintessence is basically the base um, is the 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 essential part of an experience quintessence that's what it means the main point um this um lists in the notes and i'm going to read them because they're on the bo box and you're going to uh, probably be able to experiment them as well i'm also going to read them because they probably won't give you a very clear idea of what it smells like none of them do read the notes but it's like no yeah, mm, eh. um so for fulgurance for the first phase they list pomelo and licorice for the second phase the metamorphosis um they list hazelnut cedar cinnamon and chlorophyll which basically means the green stuff in plants think about uh spirulina I think that's the closest you can get uh, thinking of chlorophyll. And for quintessence, uh, they list amber, um, leather, and vanilla. Now, what it smells like, hard to tell. What I can tell you that is this. From the, from the three of these, um, this is probably one of the most compact and closest to what it's supposed to smell like. Uh, it is not cozy. It's a, it's like an echo in the mountains. If any of you did escalades, climb, mountain climbing, you know that you get past the last layer of trees and you're in between two peaks and there's an echo. It smells cold. It smells very crisp. It almost smells like a, a high detail photograph if that makes any sense it's very airy um it it behaves like a fougere i do smell apart from what i um uh, listed here um the cedar is very prominent but it's a very sharp one i've never been to lebanon i don't know what a lebanon cedar um smells like but i have visited the atlas uh, mountains in morocco um and stuck my nose into some of those gnarly super dry um very concentrated um uh, scorched if you want but at high altitude um woods and that's what it smells like um i do smell a little bit of kumarin um uh i don't think the vanilla is straight up. I think it's mixed. Um, there is a very vague um, hint of hinoki, which is um, uh, a wood that we see in Japanese influence um, uh, fragrances. Um, I do feel a little bit of lavender of the very cold and almost medicinal mm, uh, um, camphoric kind. Um, and it becomes very elevated, if that makes any sense. Uh, you can feel most of these um, notes that I just um, uh, listed for you, um, with few exceptions, like the cinnamon doesn't come through as cinnamon. It comes through as a, um, uh, almost like, a, again, minty. So it's cold. Cinnamon usually goes towards warm and most frequently into hot, but this time it's it's cold. The licorice comes comes through very nicely. Um, it goes more into the herbal aspect of anisic. I, I mean, it's mm, almost like fennel seeds. 
Um, yes, it's somewhat mentholy. So it, like I said, it makes me think of the old days when I was young and skinny and strong and did climbing. Um, you would you would climb a peak and then there's an echo and you're above the clouds, you're above the last layer of trees. The air is very rarefied and clean. You almost feel like you're breathing and smelling a very high definition picture. One of those that you see on uh, online and you zoom in and you zoom in and you zoom in and every single detail is very, very um, clear. It's so clear. It doesn't make sense to the human eye. So, So, Lebanese cedar is quite aromatic, and it smells in a wonderful in a temperature adjustable burner. Now that is fancy. I don't have one of those. I'll show you my burners, and it's not it's not fun. In the end, it becomes quite quite creamy. This one doesn't have creaminess. Like I said, it's very sharp, almost uh, medicinal, almost mentholic, almost metallic in a way. Cold in the nose. Vanilla-like. Okay. In this case, I think vanilla is more like Tonkai-ish. Um, it's the kind of cold sweetness. It's not vanillin. It's not vanilla. And it's definitely not, you know, any fancy vanilla absolute. But the whole creation is, is giving me life because... Um, I struggle with anisic flavors, even though I look for them because they're very romantic. You're thinking about absinthe, you're thinking about, uh, you know, fennel and fennel seeds and mastique and ouzo and all these fun stuff that I want to like, but I'm struggling if they're not blended, um, appropriately. My nose only needs a few molecules and then it's done. Um, so, uh, you know, anisia bella is not there's some herbs in there that I absolutely like on their own, but not in combination. Uh, Lolita Lempica, the uh, old MMA uh, from Caon, which I think is one of the best irises out there. Um, they're all different kinds of um, anisic flavor. This one is licorice, um, pure licorice, which means it's also woody. Probably there is some ISO E in there or whatever other, you know, new woody concoctions that appeared after 2010. I don't know what's in there. I don't care what's in there. It's a very interesting, rarefied air sensation, which I usually don't get from, from fragrances. Fragrances to my nose are easy to catalog and there are very few um, uh, categories of manifestations when it comes to um, dispersion um, of molecules if that if that makes sense um, so this one is of the three the one that Im Im implies to my brain suggests open space rarefied air it is not harsh it is not even personal. Um, it's not one of those fragrances that exist on their own that get to wear you instead of you wearing the fragrance, but it is an ex accessory that I would place more in the um, atmospheric um, with a slight fougere um, under manifestation, if that makes sense. Um, that's kind of how I can describe it. If none of this makes sense, please let me know because I don't want to just sit here. Um, yeah, I don't want to sit here blabbering. I, if, if you have questions, shoot, please. If you have, you know, um, uh, extra information, please. If you've tested this, come through. I love lives because we get to learn from each other. I'm not going to sit here and go, hi. I'm just sitting here. Like, I was so bored. Yeah, you say something. I don't know what to say. There's, that's never going to happen. It's not ozonic. No. No. It doesn't, and, and I don't even know what you mean by ozonic, but it's not ozonic in any way that I can conceive. Um, you know what I'm saying? All right. Moving on. Moving on, because we have two left. And, well, I've been talking for 40 minutes. 
It's like a live show. Somebody should, uh, you know, <laughs> should stop me. All right. Moving on. So that was for the Bshare, because that's how you say Bshare in Arabic. Um, or Bshare, if you prefer. Prefer, si vous préférez français, c'est le fourré de Bshare. Worst of the gods. A very cold, airy, slightly fougetic um, concoction. Number two, behind door number two. Where are you? Where you are? Where you are? You are here. Here we go. Lettre rêve. I keep saying lettre rêve, but it's lettre, uh, lettre rêve. Être, uh, this is where I needed to do a little bit of research because I'm not that specific with my French. Être means beach. So it's a beach, not a sea beach, but the wood the the tree named beach so um as soon as i isolated it i know exactly uh, what it means a beach is a uh, light wood light as in it doesn't have any weight it's very porous it's airy you don't really do much with beach sometimes you do like ikea furniture so it's like a, a an easy grows fast beach it's a beach tree <laughs> Um, Lettre Reve means the dreamed of beach, the beach somebody dreamed of, the imagined, imaginary, dreamed of beach tree, which took me further into Russian folk tales where they're, you know, maybe you've been exposed to them lately because, you know, Suleko, there are a lot of actually uh, Russian niche houses that are coming with Baba Yaga with all of these folk tales, inspired, inspired folk tales, inspired fragrances. But in one of them, um, there's this thing that I believe uh, Hayao Miyazaki who is a Japanese animation master, took it and appropriated it and used it. The concept is there's a house living on chicken legs. Those chicken legs are made of beach, in um, beech wood. And they can move, and the house moves with them. And inside the house, there's a Baba Yaga, there's, a, there's an old mean witch, and so on and so forth. Anyway... Uh, the dreamed of beach uh, could have who knows how many sig sig uh, um, significations, meanings. Um, but in this case, to be honest, again, doesn't really match what's inside. It opens the same way. The bottles are exactly the same. Maybe I shouldn't um, show you all of them, but it's written like this. Lettre rêve. Okay. This too is a hundred mil. All of them are like that. Um, all right. The fulgurance on this. So the begin the beginning um, flurry is taranis, mandarin, cinnamon, and cloves. Uh, the metamorphosis phase, which is the, the middle phase, is sandalwood, vetiver, Patchouli, um, one of them says cedar, the other one says oud. I told you there's a difference between the French uh, list and the English list. Gayak is on both, and then uh, one of them has jacaranda, um, and that's it. And the quintessence, um, the base of it is listed here as, listen to this, the French lists it, uh, lists it as plum, leather, and musk. And the English version of the list lists porto, wine, plum, and leather. So there are differences between, between the two. This, to me, is absolutely fantastic as a fragrance. All of them are. It feels like they're elevated versions of something else. They might be. All of them are slightly separated from what's happening in niche today and what we expect the context of perfumery to be. Uh, like I said, they seem 
all of them, and I would venture to guess the rest of the line is the same, they seem like an exercise in art rather than an exercise in perfumery. Something is falling. This is fantastic, really. Vahush, Vahush, tell us where you're logging in from. Okay, this was this was sprayed a little bit earlier. Um, unlike the first one, in this you can feel punctually every single one of these ingredients plus some. The combination of them um, settles in a way that is warm um, and is liquid, which is odd because the first one was very airy. The the contrast was um, interesting. Irvine, California, yay! Um, this is liquidy. This is almost maybe because I read port wine. I don't know. But even before that, the first time I tried it, it felt um, like one of those thick wines, like a Madeira wine, like a port wine. Like a, so it's not, it doesn't pour blah, 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 like water. It pulls, pours a little, slightly oily, if that, if that makes sense. The way they combine, SoCal there too. Um, the way they combine reminds me of older executions of civet. So this lists some musk. I would venture to guess there's a little bit of uh, civet and maybe a little bit of costas. Nobody uses costas anymore. But there's a slightly wet animalic um, that one can feel and a bunch of other things. So I'm going to I'm going to go through them because I don't know where to place them. It doesn't really match the picture that you would mm, uh, get from the ingredients. It does open with a lot of spices, but uh, they're not hot as you would expect. Cinnamon, clove, uh, all of these um, uh, uh, imprint hotness. Uh, what's the difference in scent between civet and castor am? The way I recognize them in the back of the brain, the civet is slightly... Pissy, okay? So it's like uric, uh, slightly, um, and a little bit oily and um, sour. P, P, like old P. Um, we went over Floyd Bichai. That's it. And the second one we're talking about is Lettre Rêve. And I have one more. So I need to speed up because <laughs> it's late. Um, so Civit is pissy if you want and um yes and and castor M is furry and slightly smoky <laughs> oh my cd just went on okay um so it started it's it start with was starts with warm um uh spices not hot um it does go into a slightly medicinal patchouli. There's a little bit of camphor in this one too, but it's more like a, um, more like eucalyptus rather than straight up camphor um, because the patchouli goes into that direction. And to be honest, it's the first time I feel like patchouli is is balancing things out a little bit. Usually it stands out or it, it, it imprints a facet that you can't ignore. In this case, it's kind of like more encompassing. Um, and um, I feel a lot of smoky woods. Like this guy kind of makes sense to me. But apart from all of this, this behaves slightly like a sheep. I would guess there's oak moss in this. I would guess there's a little bit of green rose in this, whatever that means for perfumery. Some of you make your own fragrances and Lucas know, knows all the aroma chemicals uh, known to men. They can jump in and, and let us know if anything sounds familiar um, or if everything sounds familiar for that matter. Um, uh, I smell a little bit of um, orris of the powdery kind. It's not... It, uh, you would think that it goes into like lotus and watery and stuff. This one is the kind of uh, dry, powdery, starchy kind, if you want. So is the, the sandalwood, slightly starchy. Usually, to my nose, it goes into creamy or it goes into soury, 
In this case, <laughs> this must be the pissiest conversation we've ever had in live, in live sessions that are not about the <laughs> that in particular. I love it. See, that's why I'm doing lives. That's why I don't do recordings. I mean, apart from the fact that I suck at it, <laughs> record, speak to the camera, but myself to myself, edit, upload, it never comes out right. I suck at it. Anyway, it's fun. We're going to do this again if you don't mind. If there's only one of you showing up, we're doing it and it's a party. All right. Um, so I was saying I smell some civet, maybe some costas, definitely a little bit of oak moss or something that behaves like oak moss. Um, Teddy loves it. I don't know who Teddy is. Oh, you're Teddy. Yeah. Try to eat the bottle. Loves what? Oh, the civet. <laughs> of course he does. Uh, it smells familiar. I know Teddy. Of course I know Teddy. Um, rose. Starchy orris. Smoke. I also pick up a little bit of um, beeswax. Slight beeswax. In any case, the whole contraption is liquidy, is licorice, lic liquory, like liquor. Uh, the plum is like preserved plum. It's juicy. It's fruity. Just enough. It does never cross the line into, you know, too sweet, into actual today's fruitiness. It doesn't cross the line into weird uh, heady patchouli or too much, you know, wood. It's, it's, it threads a very, very delicate line of sweetness, spiciness, woodiness. And the whole impression is, like I said, one of a deep, warm, mulled liquor, if you want. I'm just trying to put it in some sort of uh, context to give you an idea. All of these are highly conceptual, like I said. They're artistic, um, but they're easy to wear. Unlike other creations nowadays or from the past, you know, 10, 15 years, these are very, very easy to wear, in my opinion. So that was um, Lettre Rêve. Has nothing to do with Russian folk tales, but that's what it makes me think think of a an autumn evening um with mulled sweet wine smell o vision i know i've been i've been waiting for somebody to invent that smell o vision i think it's a great word and teleportation these two um i'm afraid i don't have better words to describe this this is this is a beautiful beautiful contraption and it and it settles in a very intimate way. Maybe ne ne has to do with the way these can be perceived. They do not project a lot. No, the the woods do not pop out. It's they don't. Um, maybe in a way that you know, like a wooden spoon that's used over and over again, or a tool uh, that's used over and over again. The wood becomes. Um, warmer and used and filled with somebody's own oils. Hi Maria. Um it's 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 a it's it's not a woody it's not a woody fragrance. It's um it's it's a it's a sweet I don't want to say fruity. <laughs> See, I'm having a really hard time. I don't want to say fruity. It is, it is, it is a very, very compact, incredibly well blended concoction that smells like liquid liquor. <laughs> Again, I don't want to say. I don't. I can't say fruit. I can't say anything. Um, Look it up, see what others say of it. But the idea of the name and story, I'm I'm only guessing. I was not able to find anything on it. But these are the first um, associations that my brain made, and I'm usually good at these. Usually, hi Mona, where are you joining from? All right, let's move on to the last one because this is what um, Anna was saying. 
higher up that she loves. And she was describing it like, let's see if I can find it. Hiroshima Monamu is on my wish list for the longest time. One of the best cherry-like bubble gum that explodes into one's mouth with the succulent and rich honey, fruity deliciousness. All right, so progressed. Welcome. So this is the third one. Um, the box looks like this. Uh, Hiroshima, Hiroshima Mon Amour is a translation into French. No, my bad. It's the original name of Hiroshima My Love. I'm just automatically assuming that everything uh, started in English, which is a mistake, particularly because I'm not from here. Um, it's the original name of a movie created in 1959, with a slight reference to Casablanca, which is an even older movie. But if you haven't heard of this, maybe you've heard of Casablanca. In Hiroshima Mon Amour, um, um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's about an impossible love story between um, a French um, and a Japanese right after World War II. Obviously, it's an anti-war um cry for help if you want um and for those times of course ah, love outside your group ah, you know um i don't know if it's an inspired title or not the movie is good um it caused quite a stir back then nowadays with all the series about chernobyl and all that stuff maybe it touches upon um some political chords that should not no longer be cordial. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, like a cordial. That's what it is. So it's liquidy and it's cordially. The first one is airy and spacey. The second one is liquidy and cordially and fluid and delicious. Thank you. Raluca says, I saw that movie. Um, so maybe with, with the current political situation and, you know, all of the new reference points to uh, nuclear disasters and armament and all that stuff, this is not necessarily one of the most um, easy things to reach for. But sometimes you go for the intention. It's the thought that counts. And in this case, I think it's harmless, particularly because, because it came before all of this craziness happening in the world today. If you don't want to hear me talk about politics, tough luck, because it's probably going <laughs> to come up here and there as, uh, as, as you know, contexts align. But there you have it. Hiroshima Mon Amour. It's a beautiful box, I think, in the Japanese, uh, ex you know, predictable aesthetic with the... Fuji and with the red dot and all that stuff, which is kind of cheesy, but hey, bottle looks the same, of course. Like this, um, name is there. Hi, focus, thank you. So, Hiroshima, my love. So, listen to this. Let's talk a bit about these fulgurants and met metamorphoses and quintessence. For fulgurants, they list yuzu, mandarin, and chromophytes. What chromophytes are? I didn't look because I think it's so dumb to list something. That no I mean, I don't know. Chromo refers to color. Feet, fites refers to something that um, eats color. Whoever knows what chromophytes means, please let us know. Let's educate each other. Um, so that is the fulgurance. That is the intro uh, to Hiroshima Mon Amour. The pillow is a gift to me, and it's all sequins. It's an anti-war manifestation, and it was a it was an art exhibit that I went to, and I had a conversation with uh, one of the artists, and he sent it to me. Uh, that's what the pillow is about. Um, so for the fulgurance is the citrusy opening. It's slightly there. Um, and the user stays throughout the development of this fragrance. It's very easy to, to notice um, because it's a specific um, green, uh, green floral 
but super sour citrus aroma. Um, it's very particular. I, I recognize it very easily. Whoever can search for chromophytes, please let us know what they mean. For metamorphoses, uh, lotus, cinnamon, clove. That's what they list. And for quintessence, uh, precious woods, whatever that means, cherries, and royal jelly. Now, um, all of this is there. I think... I think there are plenty other um, notes and accords in this that come through. But I have to say, uh, whatever musk they're using, whatever beeswax accord they're using, whatever this royal jelly accord means, from a perfumery perspective, it blends to create, and I think I've referred to this before, to create uh, the idea of milky funk <laughs> if you've ever by mistake crushed a grub you know that kind of organic animalic matter you know it's not a plant that is slightly lukewarm slightly creamy and slightly funk creamy funk i'm not even going to say what yeah, the inside of a banana smells like that sometimes. Royal jelly, I don't know if any of you experimented it firsthand in pure form. It's kind of like that. Sperm is like that. I'm sorry, I had to say it. But it's like... Uh, it's not awful. Because in this context, doesn't it doesn't pop and it doesn't stay. It you know some fragrances have certain combinations like very thick labdanums. Uh, some of the balms after they dry in certain combinations, Immortel does that. In certain combination, it smells like dried spit or like you know morning breath, vaguely in the back of the brain. This is not like that. This is not like that. This just uh, makes everything warm and cozy if that makes sense and of the three makes this powdery it's very weird um the cherries are there i would say there's a lot of um um sweet cinnamon kind of like for those who've tried it before there's some gums called red gums red red chewing gum so it's a so it's a spicy but very sweet type of Dead bug. <laughs> um, so the, the everything is very balanced. It smells like gin a little bit. Um, it smells like um, 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 what do you call it? Uh, a little bit rubber, like caoutchouc, like like raw rubber, or maybe I guess the closest thing to that would be like birch or tar but again very milky and very raw and very natural everything smells natural individually but then together they do smell like bubble gum like Anna was saying um higher up there's a vanilla plus vanillin but it makes me think of mexican vanilla which the inside of 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 it's not absolute but the inside of of the bean um there's a lot of myrrh actually there's a lot of myrrh in in um letre rev as well and sweet myrrh in this i forgot to mention it i i smell a lot of sweet myrrh in this it's an incensey liquidy incensey kind of a thing i smell um i smell some myrrh um in in this as well it's very fruity the whole thing again all three of them are very hard to describe which is probably why a lot of people discarded them very quickly another thing for which i another reason for which i think a lot of people discard them very quickly is that all of them were very close like you really have to be nose to nose to feel them, but they last forever. Um, at least 12 hours. I peed on your spring. I'm sorry, Anna. I love this fragrance. I've been wearing it. You can tell this is 
you know, this is this has been worn. Um, this and Let's Rivave, I've been wearing. Um, the other one is too cold for me, and I tend to make things even colder, so it's like your teeth freeze. Um, <laughs> this life is fun. I got a lot of this stuff. Interesting to testies. <laughs> <laughs> it's very I'm trying to describe individual in, uh, ingredients because I think you would be able to feel them but together they create something else it's just it's just odd it's uh, admirable in my book it's so hard to make interesting things nowadays um I don't remember or I don't know what they were selling for at the time when they were sold in stores. I have no idea where they were sold, to be honest, but I see them popping all over Europe. Um, and I found an Italian yesterday, I found an Italian sci site that sells 30 milliliters of these, of a few of these for like 39 euros, uh, which I thought was a very good price. Uh, considering they're gone, and when they're gone, they're going to be gone forever. But they they still pop here and there. Um, there are not too many reviews on them because they're hard to describe. How do you describe that bug that smells like bubble gum? It's just not. It's not going to happen. Um, so what I was trying to do was to paint some sort of a picture. Um, you can read the descriptions and and the um, official declarations and the you know notes. Uh, on your own. Um, I've only done it today in case you've never heard of this. Um, and because I have a feeling that what's online is not the same as what they declare on the um, on the boxes. That's why I read them. Usually I go by what my nose feels. And today there, there was some overlap. So that's um, that's why I made an exception. But these were not very well loved. These were not very well known there's they still aren't i don't think there's i think i found one review on youtube and it was on russian for one of their uh stuff um <laughs> i was sitting in trader joe's parking lot um so that is it for today we spoke of balmusque they're all different from what you would expect them to be um I like that. Like I said, they don't project much. You really have to be nose to nose with somebody to share um, this kind of um, smell. What I wanted to say about this one, and I'm sorry I jumped from one to another, but that's how the brain works. Um, the first one I described as airy and spacey, super spacey. The second one, um, uh, somebody was saying cordial. Yes, it's liquidy and a dense liquid. The third one is very powdery. I spoke of crushed bugs and bubble gum and stuff, but it's it goes into solid texture, but slightly powdery. I would not be um, surprised if this had a little bit of um, orris as well. Um, and it lists a lot of ingredients that are supposed to be liquidy in concept. The, the whole thing is um, odd solid texture. It's not solid like this. It's it's a different kind of solid. So I would call it powdery, but not not a, not smell wise, not like cosmetic powder, but like a tapioca powder that you stick your hand in and it goes like like that kind of a thing. So there's a textural powdery aspect to this, like a starchy farofa again keeps coming up. Uh, maybe maybe it's a fad. Maybe it's like you're on top of a mountain and there's an echo on the valley. Like that area, spacey. So, or museums, yeah, why not? A little bit sterile and clinical. So yeah, this is this is uh, this is going from airy to liquidy to solid, but odd. Um, this was what I had for you today. If you like this kind of content. <laughs> On fragrance and, and perfumery, if you want to hear more about stuff that nobody talked about, maybe you know about it, but nobody talked about it uh, uh, on the internetics, you know what to do. Let's present the nice bottle size. You know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, whatever. Tell others. I will try if you're okay with this. Yeah. If you're okay with this, 
We're going to do this again. I love, have I told you how much I love live videos? I love them. In Romanian, it's much easier. Um, so, um, you know, I do them, like I said, twice a week. In English, this is the first. I was slightly nervous in the beginning because I don't always find my words, as you know. But I love it. I love talking to people, like real people, people who have things to say back to me. And we've learned a bunch of things from you today. Um, so we're going to do this again. I will see you. I will see you. I would love to say, thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Stick around. Tell others. You tell others, because I'm not good at this. Um, should I, should we do, should we try to do it weekly? Can you guys do it weekly? Can at least one of you do it weekly? Because that's all I need to make a party. I mean, I can talk by myself, but it would be nice to have somebody else. <laughs> all right. Let's try to do it weekly. I'll see you next week. For today, we had Nanny, um, an obscure house started in 2010 and ended dead from 2011, started by Stefan and Beluca. Sir, if you ever end up here, you will never. But if you, Stefan, end up here, Please let us know what you thought, <laughs> what you were thinking. Let us know what were you thinking um, and what was the intention, the story, and the execution behind all of these. And that is it, folks. Keep it kind. Keep it real. Tell others. Goodness wins. You know, all the good stuff. And that's it. I don't want to go. I have a meeting. Okay. Thank you. You better love me because otherwise watching somebody you don't enjoy, that's, who does that? All right. Thank you, folks. Uh, good night. Uh, Ash, fuck. It's really late over there. Thank you all. Thank you all. I don't want to go. Okay, bye. And streaming. And I am.